What's up, Conscious Writers? It's your boy, Ian Katanak, a.k.a. the Renegade Writer from ConsciousWritersTribe.com, welcoming you to another week of the complete guide to Julia Cameron's The Artist's Wave, the largest free deep dive on the topic available online at this present moment. So, week number four is titled Recovering a Sense of Integrity. And you may be asking, Ian, you haven't posted a weekly Artist Way video in over six months. Where's your integrity? And I'm here to tell you that week number four is the hardest week in the Artist Way because, at least for me, because the main exercise for week number four is reading deprivation. And I run a fucking website called the Conscious Writers Tribe. I've read over 200 books. I'm on track to reading over 200 books in 2020. It took a monumental effort to not read books, articles, newspapers, blog posts, Insta- uh, social media. It, there's so much that you can read. And cutting all that out, telling people, you know, shutting my phone off, shutting the computer down for a whole week changed everything. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about the honest changes that you are going to receive while doing the morning pages. And Week number one was recovering a sense of safety. We had to get, we had to find our safety. Then we had to find our identity. Then once we found our, once you have that identity and you feel safe in that identity, power starts to surge up. And that was last week. But this week we are recovering a sense of integrity. And integrity is such a powerful word because if you are known as a person of integrity, then people trust you. People And not just that people trust you, they know that you trust yourself. And that's what we're starting to build this week. We're starting to wash away all the bullshit and starting to focus on the core material that we need to bring along with us in the next eight weeks. We're already through one quarter now. One quarter of the way, no, one third of the way, excuse me, one third of the way done everybody. And Julia Cameron calls the morning pages psychiatric, a spiritual chiropractic, chiropractor, excuse me. And they really are because as you start to, and let's, boom, as we start to move our way through the pages, the seedy and nasty elements of ourselves are going to come up. And we're going to get into this in a little bit, but what you were holding on to, the, the job, and let's just go right into it right now. It's something called zero base thinking. And what you ask yourself to do zero based thinking is would I have ever gotten started with this project, this relationship, this career, if I had to do it all over again, knowing what I know now? If your answer is no, then you need to get out as soon as possible because we have this puritan mindset. We have this weird mindset that we have to finish what we start. And the morning pages start to expose what we need to stop immediately. You know, we already have got some power going on. We have some momentum. If you've been actually journaling for four weeks and doing some artistic endeavors in your real life or some spiritual practices, you are on a streak of momentum right now and I applaud you for that. I applaud you for being on that streak of momentum. So now is the time to start ditching some stuff. Now it's time to start really dialing in what you don't need and asking that question. If I knew it all, would I do it again? A lot of stuff in my life two or three years ago, I had was I was wrong. And when I first started the morning pages, the morning pages helped me get out of a relationship I didn't want to be in, a job I didn't want to be in, a just system and way of life that wasn't functional. And the morning pages, along with a few other authors, helped pull me out of that. And you have to keep going. These matter more than you think. And one of the quotes that Cameron talks about is one from Chekhov. And if you don't know who Chekhov is, is he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, short story writer of all time. And he's Russian. And he says that if you want to work on your art, work on your life. And that's 100% important because you could become the best writer in the world, right? You could get everything down. Let's say we're talking about writing. You could get everything down. But if you've never had any life experience, if your imagination hasn't touched different polarities and experience hate and shame and guilt and love and bliss 
at the extreme levels for long periods of time, then you're not going to have shit to write about. People aren't going to be interested in, interested in what you have to say. So you really need to work on your life. And, you know, and as we see in the buried dreams exercise this week, do something. You got to go do something. Right now it's the COVID pandemic. By the time you see this, it probably won't be. But fuck the COVID pandemic. You need to make some action happen. Make flow, make friends, try something dynamic. Because if you haven't achieved what you've wanted to in life, your dreams, it's your fault. And most of it has to do with societal programming. And the, one of the first things I like to do is don't be scared to drop people. Don't hold on. It's time to start dropping the negative Nancys in your life. Even if your parents, you, even if there are people you can't necessarily drop, coworkers or parents, you have to reframe your whole thinking with them. I like to use, think of it as a dojo that when I go, well, I like to think of my normal life, my personal life as a dojo because sometimes you need to be prepared to handle dumb people, negative people. And I see any small situation like a technical problem on the computer or something breaking or having to cook dinner when I don't want to as training to deal with negative people when they're hitting me with, you know, hitting you, hitting you with that negativity that you know how to slide around it. You know how to have that emotional control and how to make an energetic rainbow shield around you to stop the bullshit because they will drag, people will drag you into the muck. If right now you aren't, if you're a writer, which maybe you should, you probably are if you're on this channel, if you aren't creating conscious work that's trying to change the world, a lot of that is you have self-esteem issues that were probably created by negative people. And if the negative people aren't gone, then your self-esteem is going to drop, boy or girl or whoever. We're not, we don't even do gender here on f fucking Conscious Writers Tribe, but boy, <laughs> girl, one broken heart is not worth helping, not helping millions of people. Having to break up with someone or ditch a friend and how they're going to feel is not worth how you're gonna make the millions of people that you can affect feel because you can change the world, you can do good. That book, that idea, that thing within you, you can spread it and you can do great with, great things with it. So another cool thing that Julie Cameron talks about is Kriyas. And Kriyas, she wants to, she calls them spiritual seizures. And she also calls them, let me see. She really calls it a surrender, but as a yogi, as someone who runs a website called SavvyZen.com, Kriyas are really purifications. And one of the most common ways of purification is doing Jala Neti, which is, I'm sure you've heard of the, the, the Neti pot. And I like to give recommendations on the show for all my writers out there. So, and you need to start Neti potting. It's actually one of the most useful things for your immune system right now with COVID, with respiratory illnesses. But just in general, being able to breathe life is important and this is one of the first kriyas that is taught in um, yogic schools and what i like to use an advanced one is the uh, sign pulse and you've probably seen the infomercials of the ones people hold but the sign pulse is the best because you can use your own salts because you need to have salts to balance the ph because you're going to be blowing water up your nose and a lot of machines that you'll buy on Amazon make you use their own salts and they might be cheaper, but eventually because you have to use their salts in a certain packet in a certain portal that, you know, registers if it's the right thing, you'll eventually, um, it will add up to more. And this thing is a lot more advanced too. This thing can blow your nose, go to levels in your nose that, nose that you don't even know. And that's one of the first, um, Kriya options, but she's really talking about the purification process, the trial by fire. When you start to purify, things start to happen. You start to really, um, you start to really experience ecstatic changes, and that's and that and and a we'll maybe go forward one. Oh, oh, we're missing it. And one of the. My favorite ecstatic poets is Kabir. And let me see if we have him on here. Kabir could be on here. Let's, let's check Kabir out. Let's see if we got Kabir, everybody. How's everybody doing? Comment in the chat. I don't think we got Kabir in here. 
Um, I would recommend reading Kabir, the Robert, uh, with the translations by Robert Bly. Kabir was a Middle Eastern poet, I think, in like the pre one thousand or around. You know, let's 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 confirm. Let's confirm about Kabir. Let's do a live. We're doing it live. I think we got Chrome right here. Oh no, Kabir. Kabir is a. Poet from India, yeah, he's Indian from the fourth, 15th century, so the 1400s. So I would recommend Kabir if you wanna learn about that ecstasy state, you've probably already feel, felt it. The laughing, the joy, the ideas, the sensation. I take walks every day and 90 minutes of walking and the, when, I'm, when I was on reading deprivation, I was just booming with ideas. I've never felt like that before and these purifications can help and and another one I like to do is uh, Kapalabhati Pranayama and I would look this up, I would do a little bit more research but the gist of it is just doing short and explosive inhale so if we look at my stomach right here my book right here we're gonna be doing, so we're gonna suck the stomach in and we're just gonna be going in really fast and then a slightly passive inhale. We're not even gonna inhale, your body's gonna do it automatically. So you're gonna sit probably, preferably, in a lotus pose. We got lotus going on and you know, hands down in a mudra and we're gonna, And doing some rounds of that, um, like I said, I would look up a recommendation, but doing maybe 120 of those, maybe one or two times, will really start to do a, perform a purification in the body because it starts to raise the Ayurvedic dosha, pitta, and also agni, which is the creative force. The, in uh, Ayurveda, which is the Indian system of medicine, they believe that pitta, which is one of the constitutions, determines, excuse me, determines Creativity and one of the best ways to raise that is Kapalabhati or I mean there's a lot of other ways too and it raises something called Agni. Uh, Pitta and Agni go hand in hand at some level. So enough of that. Let's talk about the big one. No, we, I mean we, let's keep talking and we don't need to get to reading deprivation. If you're still with me, Comment down below, hit me up on Instagram, ConsciousWritersTribe.com, maybe subscribe to the channel. I'm really trying to get this going, so uh, I would love to have you, I'd love to talk to you. I read all messages, reply to all messages, all comments, that would be dope. Um, and what she starts talking about, um, Julia Cameron, is letting it go, don't let it stay. And don't let these things stay in your life. And one of the best ways to change your life is to redetermine your values. And I am going to put in the, on the website and the YouTube link uh, comments, two different article links. And one is, to, and they're both by Steve Pavlina, a great personal development author. I would recommend his, all of his stuff highly. Um, he has a list of values, all the values. And if I click on them right now, let me, let me just read some of them off, some of them off so you guys get the picture. Um, stuff like achievement, fortitude, Trust, valor, piety, peace, outlandishness, optimism. And these values, what are your values right now? And by changing your values, we've talked about this before, and looking at things from a 50,000 feet foot above angle, you can really start to make some progress. And so I, list, I linked a list of values and how to live those values and what it means to have those values. And just writing out what values you have now, then shifting those and then posting them on your wall, like as so, then you start to really, um, just there's these subtle subconscious changes that are weird, but they work. And another person that enjoys values and talks about the power of values is David Allen in his monumental work, the classic on productivity and getting things done. And that's what the book is called, Getting Things Done. I think this is required reading for any author or any person trying to get their own business going with writing and self-published right, self writers because it's the ultimate system on how to get things done and how things should 
Because things start, right? An idea starts. Either an idea or you know a piece of paper lands on your desk and how do you delegate it? What happens? What's the process from it going from A to B to completion, period? How do things, our ideas and inflow in our life or our work function? And he's cracked the code. He's done, L- he, he's like, you know, the LSD version of productivity. So I would highly recommend David Allen and he'll talk more about values in there. And this, and this is, I think people shy, all the, the woo and creative types, including myself, shy away. I, you know, hate this stuff. They're like, dude, you can't, it's going to block my creativity, man. And no, it's, and as Julia Cameron, Cameron quote, um, talks about, quote, that people frequently believe the created life is grounded in fantasy. The more difficult truth is that, the more difficult truth is that creativity is grounded in reality. In particular, the focus, the well-observed or specifically imagined. And of course that's the case. The most important thing for you to be as an author, as a conscious writer, as a human, is to be pretty organized because to be able to perform the self-analysis and then share that with others and continue the great work, that you need to do is going to require a lot of organization. To be able to write a novel or write a book requires organization. And you don't need to be the most organized, but you need to be pretty damn well organized. And most people don't want to believe that. And that's why most people aren't getting things done, as David Allen would say. And with a lot of this stuff, it's about taking a, it's about having a slow change. It's about finding yourself because the pain will come if you don't. There will be pain for whatever misalignments you have in your life, there will be pain, everybody. And the transition to your authentic and creative self is going to be hard and there's going to be bad creas. There's gonna be purification processes that aren't fun sometimes. And as you can see right here, I'm 18 years old and I just cracked my head open. I just cracked my head open skateboarding and I knocked myself unconscious and this was a pivotal moment for me. This was one of these moments where I couldn't go back because I probably, it took me at least a year to recover on an intellectual level, to be able to read and think and write like how I I was supposed to. For a couple months after, I could barely read. I couldn't read anything that was hard. Like if I was going to read like getting things done or like a philosophical text that I was reading fine before, I was a dud. And at that time I was studying philosophy at Utah State University and I was, struggling so hard in my classes. I would have to read one line at a time and see if it was relevant to what I was doing in my class because I had lost it. And like right the, that day I was coming from class, that was not the case. And that changed my life though because I had to start using my brain in different ways. I had to start becoming creative. I had to start looking at different perspectives on life because I couldn't force, with, force things with my brain anymore. Like being a smart person being intelligent, more intelligent than most people around you, you, there's a tendency to force it. And doing that helped me not force it anymore. I mean, cracking my head open like that helped me not force it anymore. So that transition, something had to happen. And I'm begging you right now to make that transition by yourself because the universe will force you to do it if you've already become en- enlightened enough. If you've already raised your kundalini or moved into higher consciousness, it will happen. And that zero point between untransformed and transformed is what we see on the screen right now. This is from Carlos Castaneda's uh, A Separate Way book cover. And where you lose the identity. To gain a new identity, you have to lose your identity. You have to destroy the false self. And in that zero point in that zero ground is where you lay the foundation. And if you don't have a strong enough foundation with strong values, you're not going to get anywhere because, and you're going to have to restart. You're literally going to have to go back down to the bottom. There's a tower in San Francisco. It's one of the best. Let me look it up right now. Let's call it, Let's see. It's one of the best pl- places to live. It is called the Millennium Tower, man. And it was supposed to be the best place you could ever live. But no one realized that they built it on sand. They didn't dig the foundation deep enough. So now it's slowly starting to lean. You can't, you know, marble start to roll. And in a couple years, it's gonna be unusable. The investment failed because people didn't take enough, they didn't 
build the foundation the right way. If they would have done that, it would be the best place to live. But now it's the worst place to live. So it's not the worst place to live in San Francisco. My God, if you go to San Francisco, you know what I'm what I mean. But um, yeah. So when we finally make the transition, and this is me a couple months ago, like you start to pull it together. Conscious Rider Stripe hasn't got off like how it's gonna get off in the next couple months because I haven't completed the cycle. I haven't made the transition entirely from who I was a couple years ago and who I am now, which is someone who speaks the truth, speaks motivational things to help people create more, trying to spread wisdom and knowledge and do it every single day so that we can change this world, lift the nasty base consciousness energy with our writing. It, you know, I am becoming that person and I'm closer than I've ever been. I feel really close now. And same with you, who do you wanna be? And it may take a year or two to set that foundation. It may take a year or two to start building off that. And you may think you're doing it, but then you fall, you fall hard. Like I've fallen hard with some of these websites. I've taken months off because I'm had to restart and rethink everything. Like even just these slides right here, this is a, innovation, the productivity and the flow of these slides, you know, helps a ton. And one of the, and Julie Cameron start, uh, mentions that your dreams are getting stronger when you start to build this identity because there, um, there's going to be a dream program on this, um, on Conscious Writers Tribe actually. By the time you hear this, unless you're hearing it as soon as it debuts, go check it out because I'm going to have a full program on lucid dreaming and dreaming for writers and how to make it happen and how to make it influence your literature. Because it's crazy because it's, you can create a scene when you're lucid dreaming, the scene in your novel and actually live it. Right now you can live it in your imagination, but in the lucid dream you can live it in totality with every single sensation actually happening to you in first person point of view. So, oh, and there we are. There it is, everybody. Um, and observe these changes. And right now, if you don't watch the dream program, observe the changes and keep journaling about them. Journal about what's going on. Journal and feel. That's what these morning pages are. It can also be a dream journal. People don't talk about that. But you can use your morning pages as a dream journal. Write down your dreams and then get going. Write down what happened and then get going. That's what I do. I haven't really mentioned that because it's just automatic, but I write my dreams and then I write my other dreams. And then I write about a lot of the time at the very start, I go into dreams and like productivity stuff more and like what I wanna be in character stuff. Then on page two and three is when the weird uprooting magical stuff happens. I have to kind of get the conscious energy out first and then move on to that. So the next thing I want to talk about and that she talks about is, is that it's time to break the conditioning that we have been diluted as artists, as writers by society. And it's even factors larger than us. Sometimes it's the geomancy in society. I live here. This is where I live, Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I live up here in, uh, I guess you can't see my mouse right now, but I live up uh, at, in the right corner. And Society has hurt us and individual healing is the way out because we most of the time it is mass groups that hurt us. It is society that hurt us. And we think that we need to go to group therapy or be a part of groups, a writing group to do that. No, it is the self-healing. It is the journey that of you showing up every day to habits that build you, to ideas that you honor, that come from the ether, the connection, man. That is what matters. And society does not want that. Capitalism, socialism, the man, the Illuminati, the dark occultists, the awakened ones, dark and light. The light people do want us to have that. But the dark ones, they don't want that. And it's up to you to break the conditioning. And Julie Cameron has a great quote that the snowflake pattern of your soul is emerging. Each of us is a unique, a, a unique creative individual, but we often blur the, that experience, that uniqueness with sugar, alcohol, drugs, 
overwork, bad relations, toxic sex, under exercise, over, over TV, under sleep, many and varied forms of junk food for the soul. And exactly, there are so many forms of junk food for the soul. Instagram, unless you are following super conscious people and using it as a platform, spread your own work, trash, Facebook, trash, almost pop music, trash, most websites, trash, time wasters. And that's what you're going to realize on reading deprivation week. You have to do it. And reading deprivation week includes Instagram. It includes websites. It's everything. No reading, no websites. There's no image website. What are you going to go look at a portfolio? I guess you can do that. That's not fun though. Go look at real art. No reading. Once again, no reading. No. And during this week, you can start adding in a couple other habits because you'll have a ton of time. During no reading week, you have a ton of time. And all that extra time, you could be cooking you know, a new diet or exercising more, taking walks or spending time with your significant other or writing, goddamn it, creating. You're actually doing something, man. And let's get into that right now, which is reading deprivation week. And this... Um, this, this slide got, this photo is a little bit messed up, everybody. This is me at, at the goddess temple of spirituality dedicated to Sekhmet in the Las Vegas desert. And you have there, we were already talking about this, but there are so much, there's so much going on in your brain. And before we get to that, let's talk about the Barry dreams exercise. And the Barry dreams exercise is where you list five, five, five hobbies that sound fun five classes that sound fun, five things that you personally would never do that sound fun, five things that you enjoy doing, and five silly things you would like to try. And if you did that already, I dare you to write five more and don't look at the other five. If you haven't done that already, write 10 and disregard the first five. Focus on the last five. You can do the first five later, but do the last five first because the first five usually is your conscious mind. I usually do lists of 20. If you really wanna go deep, Do 20 hobbies that sound fun and take the last couple because those are like the weird stuff that you are kind of like, why would I do that? But it gets you totally out of your comfort zone. Probably the five things that you've talked about, you've already done before or you already know something about, but doing something that's totally new will blow your mind. Like, I mean, I like doing ceramics or something. That sounds fun, but that's not my wheelhouse at all. That's something totally random. I don't do art. Like I do art, but like not, especially not ceramics. So check that out, do that. And now back to reading deprivation though. So reading deprivation changed my life because I had all this time, I had this energy, I had this voice back that I hadn't had in a while. And the progress on my poetry book, Silence in the Shamanic Desert, by the time you see this, that will probably be be out too. Go check it out, some dope ass eco poetry uh, de- that's desert based, psychedelic, you know, all the good stuff. So reading deprivation week, it is time everybody to drop the, the clutter and sit, minimize, enjoy. Listen, there's a silence out there, everybody. There's a stillness and tapping into that is one half of the equation to becoming a great author all the noise, all the reading, all the work. That's a part of it. But before, before life, there was nothingness. Before sound, every single song, why your favorite song is good, not because of the melody or the harmony, it's because of the spaces between the music. The spaces between the music, the, the zero ground, it's what defines everything. So take this into consideration. I. I'm asking you as a friend, as a fellow conscious writer and human being to not read anything for a week. No work when you're going to have to have a week off of work because no documents at work. It can't be work related. can't be school related. Literally no words can come out. If you want to write, that's fine. If you want to review a little bit of some of your fresh writing and do a little bit of editing, then do that. But I found that that week, I, I wrote at least a hundred poems that I did, haven't even got into yet. I, cause I was just flowing. I would maybe do a small revision, but most of them were just, are just first drafts, just stream of consciousness, first drafts, no revision. And whatever form of art you're doing, especially if it's something with the written word, just do that. 
just write. Save it. You'll, in a week, you can edit it all, and you'll have some time to, that, to let that simmer a little bit. So do, just do the deprivation. If you've made it this far, you got this. Deprive again. I actually did two weeks of deprivation, and I'm doing it intermittently um, over the course of days right now, you know, for a day or two now, just as a short, short sprint, and keep going at it. Don't stop. Keep creating. Focus on the creating. Creating. If you are creating something right now, send it to my ass. I'll post it on social media once you release it. Nothing old though, new stuff. New stuff that you're working on right now that hasn't been released yet. And say and say like, yo, I'm working on this right now. And I'll say, you can fucking do it. And then when it's out, free marketing for me. Closed deal. If you're seeing this right now, I got you. So I would say that's the complete guide for this. And I'm actually going to have a complete guide to reading deprivation on the channel. It's probably gonna be about 15 minutes and more concise and have a slideshow and stuff. And because I did one for the morning pages and I feel like reading deprivation is just as important. So my name is Ian Kadimnak, everybody. You guys, and let's do one last slide. Pal's book, everybody, Pal's book, everybody in Portland, Oregon. I don't know if the writers have looted it yet, but you know, fuck, if I was gonna go looting, if I was, <laughs> If the conscious writers were looting and pillaging in Portland, we'd be going to Pal's books. So see everybody later. Have a great rest of your week. I plan to post another video soon. I say that every single time, but this time it's going to happen because I have a fresh brain from doing reading deprivation. Peace.